गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन I request all the participants to be here with us. Our scheduled will start our session exactly at 7:30 p.m. Until until then, please follow up the guidelines that is community rules. Use a friendly language when you are using the chat session. we will surely address all your queries and the feedback feedback form will be given at the end of the session we definitely understand your patience that you are spending your time here waiting so but schedule is at 7:30 so keeping that in mind uh, with all the participants we'll surely begin at 7:30 exact
good evening the clock has ticked 9 7 30 so we'll start with our session i welcome you all for today's webinar on the title android app development with no codings my name is mahi and i'll be your presenter and instructor for this webinar As a webinar, to keep it more interactive with the session, I request all the participants to use the chat session to ask your queries and doubts. And I also request all the participants, please use a friendly language so that it doesn't have any issues with any other participants or misguide the guidelines of the community. Before we start, a quick note onto the session. We welcome all types of questions, but we would not address the roadmap questions on a particular thing which are not covered in the seminar or the webinar. And the motive of the webinar is clearly to deliver the knowledge and help all the participants to get started with your Android development in the most easiest way so that you can shape up your ideas into real thing. I would encourage all of you to post your questions in the timeline or in the chat session. I would also cl clarify the most frequently asked questions while in the presentation itself. And those I miss, you can always ask me here on the chat session. And please be with us until then, we'll be providing the feedback form at the end so that we get to know how was it and we'll also have some announcement at the end so with this not get wasting our time let's start with today's session so the title having an android app development with no coding required we'll see agenda for today We'll see why we need an Android development. We'll understand the various components of application that is an Android app. Then we'll see intro into the platform which we are going to use to create our applications without using any codes. We'll understand between the design and the blocks and how this application works behind the scene. That is a sequence of instructions and how those are being utilized and made into work using the blocks. We'll see components and how to use the components. We'll follow this seminar with 13 projects. And the very first project will be like Hello World. So instead of Hello World, as it is already done by everyone, we'll have this as a Hello Hummingbird, your first app. Then we'll see event handlers, method calls. I'll just go in a faster pace to cover this agenda for today. We'll go one by one in a sequence followed later. So we'll see property getter setters, application testing. Once we get our first app, we'll see how can we test our applications, how can we generate the APK and how can we share. And I'll also address all the required question answers and the queries that how can you publish it? How can you share? How can you have your things? And how can you make your application much more better and responsive? Then we'll have working with numbers and then we'll have a, our project two and a three login application. We'll see how comment works. Follow up with working with the clock. Then we'll see how can we have the current index time using a dialog box. We'll also cover how to use the media that is have the audio files and the video files being played. Then we'll see how can we use the text to speech app. That is when you speak something, then it converts to your text. We'll see how can you speak and then that converts into a text that is speech recognizer as a project seven. We'll also cover camera, create a simple camera application. And as ad addition to this, to make it a more better, we'll also use two sensors that is light sensor as a project nine and orientation sensor as a project 10. Come, moving ahead, we'll also see how can we create a 
phone call application and also sending text application and at the last if we have enough time we'll also see web browser and in the web browser we'll see how can we make a very simple web browser and we'll have even the functionality of going forward and a backward to the pages and navigating to the navigating the web or the browser in the most easier way so having our agenda very clear we'll rightly jump into why we need to develop the android applications So why? Why do we need to develop an Android application? I'll just make it, keep it very much simple and clear without taking up much of your time into this theory part. So I'll have just a few points that is, as we know, it is the fastest and the biggest community, largest share of operating systems with more than 2 billion active users. And we also know that Google Play Store is the largest app market we have. And the revenue model, which is the most interesting part of having the application build it or having the Android development to learn as a reason. So now we'll start with the main thing. Before we start, I'll just show you the brief how does what all the app has so that you don't have any confusions when we start doing it. And we'll start doing it within two minutes. With this said, so consider this is your application you have. So very first thing is what you see the screen one that is called a screen title and the next one what you see the blank box that is text box and whatever you have this in a circular or a rectangular solid type of thing that is a text button or a button and then we have checkbox we have status bar then we have uh, the screen itself and this is called a password text where you enter the password and those characters are hidden and not been displayed so with this this is just a very basic and very common components what we have in the ui of the application so we'll go ahead with the same and this is a label label is nothing but uh, this cannot be edited this is just an information which can be displayed as a text and that cannot be edited anyway So we are done with the application com components and everything. Let's jump right into the platform, what we are going to use. And I'll take you through the complete platform and how can you get started with the platform. So follow up with me and we all will end in the same place. So I request you all to open your browsers. I'll also be giving you a two minutes delay between every project we complete so that you follow up with me. And if you have any doubts regarding the same project, you can ask me in the chat session so that I can clarify your doubts. So I'm here on my Google Chrome notebook. So let me search MIT App Inventor 2. I'll zoom it so you can search MIT App Inventor 2 and that should get you a result like this so we are at present we are into the second generation of MIT App Inventor 2 so this is a we are going to use the second version that is MIT App Inventor 2 as a newest version what was been updated so you can click on MIT App Inventor 2 It will ask you for a Google account. Please select a Google account. I'll just go ahead with my Google account. Once you are done with the Google account, you should get this screen where we'll have. Uh, I've already started with this bit earlier, so I'm not getting two more screens. That uh, it'll ask you for the agreement. Please select the agreement and go ahead. And once you are done, we'll have this screen. And once you have the screen, you can click on a start a blank project at the bottom. You can give your project name. So let me give a project name as 
app one and then click ok remember that you cannot have a spaces you cannot have a special characters sorry you cannot have a spaces between this project name you can have a and click on ok few of you all also may get another window that is a uh, mit app inventor you can click on the right top that is create apps and then will be redirected to the google login you can click on the google login and then you'll have the agreement sign in agree, agree to the agreement and then you can have the screen so i hope everyone are getting it until here please let me know in the chat session so that we are more interactive so that i get to know that we are following up We'll surely address your queries on how many screens can be added and all these things in the upcoming part. Okay. So now once you get to, get to the screen, I'll just take you through the complete page. So onto your left hand side, I think I'm correct here. Onto your left hand side, you have a palette. You can see here. And this is all the components, whatever we require to have in the application these are divided into many various things that is ui layout media drawing sensor socials and so on you have two types of components that is visible components and also non-visible components and at the center that is viewer screen this is where you see your screen whatever you are making it You can also do it using Android mobile also, but uh, it, you may be feeling it very difficult doing it. You can always try it out. I request, I prefer that you use a PC or a laptop to do this. At the center, you have a viewer. That is where you see come the complete UI or however, whatever the components you place inside the application. That is drag and drop it here. You get all the things, whatever you have in the screen in the viewer part. And at the next, you have components here. So this is where all the components, whatever you have added into your application will appear here. And at the last, you have a properties. So this is the place where you can edit the properties of the components, what you have added. So as now the screen one is selected and I have the screen one complete properties of the screen one. So I hope it is very much clear about the UI or the interface of our platform. So with this said, we'll start making our first application. So I have the very first application is just as Hello Hummingbird. So the things that we require is have a button and have a label. And the action is whenever I press a button, the label shows Hello Hummingbird. So having our goal, let's begin. Click on a button and drag it to the screen. And we also require a label. So you can click on a label on your palette, user from inter user interface, and then drag it and drop it onto your screen. So once we are done with that, you can click on a text. So you can see here on the component window, I have two components that is button one and a label one. So now let me click on a button one and then go to the properties of the button one. I have all the properties of the button one. You can go completely down. You have text for button one. So I'll change it to press here you can give anything you want you can also have your width size let me click it and change it to person that is 87 percent something like this across you can also have the height default font size shape let me make it to 
rounded you can change the font size from here let me just change it to 23 so you can see the changes whatever i have done in the there i have my complete thing changed here once done let me click on a label now and the requirement for the application is whenever i press the button that is press here button it should show me hello hummingbird so let me go to the text here down and then change the label and make it empty so that it is empty when i don't require it only when i press it should show me the text now the question is my Compens whatever I have placed inside the application is on to my left side. Why are they not in the center? So you can always do that thing that is this all the components belongs to the parent that is parent is the screen. Screen one is the parent and these are the components inside the parent that is child components. So if I just click on the screen and then go to the properties of the screen. Here I have align horizontal and align vertical. If I change it to center my components came into the center as you can see on the screen and if i change this align vertical to the center even it came here on the center of the screen so it looks pretty good as of now so we are done with the ui part that is designing part whatever the components we require and how our application looks like and what are the changes we want to have in the visual appearance we are done with that thing we added a button we added a label and we also renamed the button as a press here and erase the complete text that is made the label one empty so that we can have our desired text once done with the ui part that is having the components in our application we can go to the blocks here on the right top you have blocks so this this was a designer screen what we did we did the complete ui part here and now we can go to the blocks if you click onto the blocks you should see a screen like this where you have on your left all the blocks and you have controls logics and whatsoever you require on your left and here on the screen you have the components that we have added into the into our application so we have only two components that is button one and a label one so now if you now click on a button one consider i click on a button one if i click on a button one you see when button one click so if we click on the when button one click and drop it here on the screen so here what we do is we do call up the method and also set text that is calling the setter method and get method so once i click on a button is the condition when i click on a button the next requirement is it should show me it should show me that is a label one is label one text should be set to hello hummingbird so i'll just drag it and drop it here i can remember whenever you just take it near to it near to it you see that uh, orange color arrow mark there so just keep it there so that it gets set into this now my requirement is to have the text so i'll change this background color to the text and from the blocks i'll go to use the text and then take the empty text and then add it, add it here once i add it here now the thing is hello i mean good so that's all for this application so we got the thing is like whenever the button one is click it is setting the label one text to hello hummingbird so we are done with this now let us check out the application that is how can we test our applications once we, once we are made so i'll go back to the des designer screen we can click here now you can open your application mobile phone go to the play store and then search for i'll just uh, screencast my my screen so 
So you can see my screen here. Just go to the Play Store and then search for MIT App Inventor. Then you select MIT App Inventor. And you, you get this MIT App Inventor 2 Companion. So you need to install this. Once you're installed with MIT Companion, click on Open here. So if you are connected to Wi-Fi, you will not get this dialog box, but I'm not connected to Wi-Fi. I'm using my mobile phone network itself. So I'll press Continue without Wi-Fi. Once you're done with this, we'll go back to MIT App Inventor, click on a Connect, and click on AI Companion. You also have an option to use Emulator. So I do not prefer using emulator because it lacks too much. So I'll just use a companion that will be very much helpful for us to check out your application in life. So once you click on a companion, you get this QR code. So what I'll do is I'll just scan this QR code. You can click on scan QR code. Once you get the scan QR code, you can scan the QR code. So now, We'll have this progress bar which will completely transfer all the assets of the application to the MIT App Inventor that is MIT AI Companion. So my application is here. So I got my application here. So if I click on a press here, I get Hello Hummingbird here. You can see when I press this button, I got a Hello Hummingbird. So my first application is ready. You can also ask me why am I getting this theme that is as a screen one like this, why I'm not getting a default thing. So for that, what you need to do is go to the MIT App Inventor back and then click on a screen one. Click on a screen one, go to the properties of the screen one, go down and then you have theme. Change that theme to device default. And the moment you change the theme to device default, you can see the theme is being changed to the device theme, whatever we usually have. So with this, we finished our first application. So now let us go to the, our next application that is text message and a dialog box dialog box or a notifier so for that i'll continue with the same app Once we are done testing the application, what you can do is if you want to share the application to anyone you want, you can do as a build here, click on a build here. Okay, I will come back to this later once you finish the applications, making applications this. So we'll move on to next application. So click on my projects and then you can click on a start a new project and give a project a name again. So I'll give this app to click on OK. If I'm too fast, please let me know in the chat session so that I can slow it down. So I'm with a new application now. So the requirement for this application is I'll have a button. So whenever I press a button, I'll get a dialog box telling that yes, dialog box, dialog box is working or whatever the message I want. So for that, I require two components. So we'll start with it. So I'll just drag the button from here and then paste it here, drag it here. And then I can choose notifier from the user interface and then drag and drop it here. Now, whenever, when the moment you added the notifier, you see like you couldn't find out the notifier on the screen here visible because notifier is an invisible components. We have two types of components that is visible and invisible. So you can see the notifier down on the screen that is non-visible component here. So 
so please do not worry about that you're not able to see the notifier on the screen because it is a non-visible component so that is there in the application and you can find the non-visible components on the bottom of bottom of the screen now let me align the components by doing align horizontal to center and this also to the center once i'm done with this i'll go to the blocks again and now i have in the screen one components that is button one and a notifier so i'll click on a button one choose button one click when button one click and what i want to do is call a notifier and then go down let me choose a call notifier show message dialog message title and a button text click on that and drag it and drop it here attach it to this so once you're done attaching to this now i need to add up the dialog message the title and the button text but to do that thing you can go to the text that is we require a text and then you have this empty text drag it here and you need not do all the time go from there and get it here you can also right click on the block and then click on duplicate so if you duplicate you get one more i need one more that is so i duplicated two times and then i attach all the three so i have all the three now let me write the text into this click on this and write show message dialog box so this is your dialog box i think so my dialog spell, spelling is wrong okay and the title is alert and the button text is okay so this is how my blocks look like i added the button one when button one is click i'm calling the notifier and the I'm setting the message to this is your dialog box and title as alert and button text as okay i repeat once again the second project requirement was whenever we press a button there should be a dialog box appearing that whatever the message we want that should appear so for that we needed two components that is a button and a notifier whereas the button was placed into the screen and notifier is an invisible component so that was not visible in the screen and that is there on the down part once done we came to the code part we went to the screen here and then choose whenever the button is clicked whenever the button is clicked I called up the notifier and I choose this show message dialog message and I gave a message that is this your dialog box and a title as alert and button text as ok. With this said let us check our application again so I'll go here and this is my scre screen and if I click on a text button I get my alert that is this is your dialog box again the same question is why is it as android 2.0 that is gingerbread and why not as early so the same thing what we didn't do is go to the screen and then uh, change this theme to from classic to device default the moment i do that thing now if i if we go to my screen this is my application and then if i click on text button so i get this as mess So I get my application, then if I play, press on OK, that gets cancelled. So with this, we finished our second application too. I'll give you two minutes of delay between now. Now, before I start with the third project, if you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section, uh, chat session.
if you have any doubts please let me know in the chat session so that i can clarify it right now At Naniti, can we create a secured website for free? So as the webinar guidelines, this is out of our scope. So you can please reach us, at, reach us out on our email ID and we'll get back to you. Will this video be available for later being too? Yeah, we'll surely make it available and we'll surely share the link also for the same was the screen one only i missed the part while downloading the app yes this was the screen one itself uh but we are doing this second application so with this we'll start with our third application that is third agenda that is third part of the agenda how to add a comment so for this i'll not create a new application I'll just go to the blocks and show you how can you add a comment. Comment is something like for the user information or the one who is doing it. So how can we add a comment in this blocks? What you can do is, this is a parent block. So you can click on that. Click on that and then right click and then you have add a comment. So you can click on this question mark and then you can add a comment this is a comment so like this you can add up the comment for anything you want all the blocks this is a second comment and this is how you can add comments to your blocks So moving forward, we'll see how to add a next second screen. For that, I'll not waste, take up your time. What I'll do is you all can create a new, applic new application or a new project, or you can continue with the same project. What I'll do is whenever I press this text button one, it should take me to the next screen. So for this, I'll not require a notifier. Now, how will I delete the component once added? So what you can do is go to the component list here on your right side, click on a notifier or the component which you want to delete and then go down and click on a delete. It'll ask for the confirmation. If you're confirmed, then press OK or delete. Once deleted, now let me create a next second screen. To create a new screen, you can go onto your left, click on add screen, and when you click on add screen it'll ask you for the screen name so by default the screen name is given as screen 2 i'll not change it i'll just keep it as it is and click on ok so i have created in second screen now where is my second screen is the question to change to the second screen you can click on a screen here on the top and you have screen 1 and screen 2 so from here you can change the screens or switch the screen so i am now into my screen 2 i'll just add up a label here and click on the screen 2 on the components and change the screen 2 properties to center and click on the label 1 and then change the text for the label 1 as screen you are on screen two. So I have my label as you are on screen two. Now I'll switch back to screen one. So whenever I press this text for button one or 
I'll just change this button one text to screen to button. Now we'll go to the blocks. We'll go to the blocks and then I have my button one here. So you can go to here controls on your right. You can click on a control. You can go completely down and you'll have open another screen name. Drag and drop it that here. And then the name of the screen two or screen two. So I'll go to the text, take up the empty text and add it here. And in this I'll write screen two. So I'm done with my coding part that is block. We'll switch back to the designer window. Now let us test the application. So I'll open my screen. So you have, I have my screen here. So if I just press screen two button and this will take me to the second screen. You are on screen two now. So this is how you can have multiple screens, any number of screens you want. I'll just go back to the application. Okay, it got reset it. So if you get that thing, your companion has disconnected. Okay, no worries. I'll go back here, reset the connection, and then connect a companion. Scan the QR code. Can we add any picture other than the phone? Uh, I'm not quite clear with your question. Please let me know in a more brief manner. Sir, is there any other platform to develop an app rather than MIT application? Yeah, we do have other platforms also, but all are a uh, copy of this MIT app inventor itself as this is an open source. Do we get the code? Yes, we do get the code once we unpack this, unzip this APK. So now we'll move on to a third project that is we'll be using clock and we'll get the time in the dialog box. So how can we go with that is? I'll just switch back to screen one. You can always uh, use the my project that is create a new project, but just to save the time, and we have many things to complete. I'll use my existing screen itself. So what I'll do is I'll, I already have one button. You can drag one more button if you want, and then go to the sensors here, onto my right, that is on the palette sensor. Click on the sensor. And choose a clock. So again, the clock is not into the screen because it is an invisible component. So I have that clock here on the non-visible component list. And here in components, I can see both the components that is button one and a clock. And into the properties of a clock one, I always, I have two things that is timer always fires and timer enabled. And the interval is given 1000 milliseconds. So timer enabled is like always the timer keeps on running and timer always fires being checked here means it's always into a fire state. Now I need a notifier to show me the time or we'll just use a label to show the time. So I'll drag a label here from here and then drop it here. I'll go to the label properties from the component list and then clear the text. So now you can click on a blocks.
I'll delete this complete block so that we can start from the fresh. Now you can click on a button one and then whenever the button was one is clicked. So click on a button one. So what you should do is click on the clock and then sorry click on a label and then set the label text so i'll just choose the set label color text color to and then just add it here change this text color to text in the text what i'll do is call up the clock and then go to date form format date time instant and a pattern so i'll take this and add it here once i'm done with this the pattern of this format is you'll show month date year and then how minute and seconds and here that is instant again go to the clock and then i'll this time i'll use the instant is clock time now that is call clock one now so i just add it here so with this what will happen is whenever i click on a button i'll get that moment of that the time and a date instant of that moment of time so now let me connect my mit app inventor and we'll see the application whether it's working or not reset the connection connect the companion scan queue So now I'm on my application. So whenever I click on the screen to button, that is uh, the name what I had given to the button, you can always change it. So if I click on to that, I get the at current that is instance date for today's date month and also the timer. So this is how you can access to the and get to the get the date and time or the clock. So you also have other methods also. For an example, if I just click on a clock. You have uh, duration two days. You have first time instant, or you can also go at just with the date, get milliseconds, hour instant, and so on. Sir, can you repeat how to testify? Uh, if I'm right, the, your question is how to test the application. If that is your question, then you can once you're done making the UI part, designer, and a block part. You can click on a connect here on the top and then uh, download the application that is a companion from the play store click on a companion you'll get a qr code scan the qr code and you should have your application in the a companion to test it out so as i have my a companion here and this is my screen one so if i just press it i get the current instance time i hope your query is cleared
uh, I request participant just to give me two minutes until the call for the prayer is finished because I'll not be audible at this, at this moment of time. So just two minutes. <laughs> Thanks for being with me until here. So we'll, we'll start, resume the session. Now moving ahead, we have uh, our third thing is media sound and application assets. So what is media sound now? So for an example, if you want to play some sound, that, that is like when you press a button, there should be a sound coming. So we can always do that thing by adding a media. So what is assets now? Assets are all the components or all the files. Example, you have added an image, you have added an mp3 file or a sound file into your application so that those are assets so for that what you can do is on to your right on that bottom you have media click on the media and then click on upload file so once you click on upload file you have to choose the file I'll just choose a file so I have something called alarm tone downloaded I'll just click on ok and open it once you have selected the file you want click on ok so you can see uploading the alarm file and then you have your asset that is media found here that is media alarm tone So once done, now the goal of the application is, so whenever I press the button, that is screen to button, I'll just rename it, is it, it is very confusing. I'll just rename it to button. Okay, so whenever there is a button is pressed, this alarm tone should play. So what I have to do is, I'll just delete this clock component because I don't need any more. I'll click on delete and then delete it. So I'll, I have two components that is button one and a label and also one more is I have added the media that is alarm tone file. So now we can go to the blocks and then I'll just delete this. Click on a button, go up and then you have whenever the button one is clicked. 
whenever the button one is clicked sorry i have we have forgot to add a one more component that is a media comp sound component so you can find us found the find the sound component in the media here click on the media and then you have a sound so drag and drop the sound component to the screen and this is also an invisible component which will be acting behind the scenes so that comes under the non-visible component so now we have a sound and then minimum interval is 500 milliseconds and sources and here on the source on your properties that i'm selecting the source as alarm tone so i'll just select the alarm tone and click on okay once i'm done go back to the blocks so now we have the sound here when button one is click play sound call sound one play so i'll just drag it and drop it here under the button one do call play so let us now check out the application whether it is working perfectly that is it is it playing the sound so here is my application so now you can hear this alarm tone uh it's not a pubg i have the alarm tone was the same so if i just press on the button So this is the sound from the application. This is not a PUBG. Okay. So this is how you can uh, add up the sound component so that like you have an alarm tone or you have a notifier or any beep sound, whatever you want. You can always use this like consider, I'll give you an use case example, like you have an application and if the value reaches to some extent that is considered like you have a temperature sensor connected to the thing. And whenever the temperature increases more than 70 or 50 consider you get a sound so you can always use this sound component to get alert and notified so this is how we can use this uh, sound component i hope i'm very clear until here if you have any doubts please let me know in the chat session so that i can clarify it out Now we'll move on to our next application that is uh, speech to text or text to speech so we'll go with the first thing that is text to speech so what do we understand by text to speech text to speech is nothing but uh, i'll have a like whatever the text i give the mobile phone or the application will read it out to me so do for doing that we require two things that is one is uh, consider like three things first one is a text box where I enter my text or desired text whatever I want and then one button is to play where like whenever you press that button it will play that is it will just a uh, speech the text whatever I have given there so now I already have a button so I need I, I require two things here that is text to text text to speech so if I go to the media here go to the media and then you have text to speech so drag and drop the text to speech here and again this is an invisible component which acts behind the scene so it is there in the non-visible component here down yes it is perfectly possible to add not just two sounds any number of sounds you want you just need to do is add up those sound files into a media and then you can choose whichever the file you want to play So once we are done adding the text to speech now i need is a, a text input so you can go to the user interface and then you have something called text box so drag the text box i'll drag it above the button so i have my text box here so i can see on the here i get this text box so if i click on the text box i can enter the text once i'm done so i have done adding three components that is a text box 
and a button and also a non-visible component that is a text to speech now we'll go to our blocks that is played i'll delete this block completely so that i can do it once again click on a block button one first and then save them to screen now okay button one click two then click text sorry text to speech and then select call text to speech here and then drag it and add it with here now what is the message to be spoken so that message is i have in the text box so i go down and then i'll just select one randomly add it here and change this to text so now what i'm doing is whenever the button one is clicked i'm calling the text to speech engine and then what it is doing is it is playing the text whichever is there inside the text box text so this is what to do now let us check out the application now so So now uh, I'll go to screen my screen and I have here let me just change it to so now I'll just press a button and it should I'll just increase my volume okay you can I should should be able to hear it hello hummingbird so you pretty well hear that whatever the text was there inside the text books it is clearly telling it you can add up any text you want and it will speech out Hello. to you so with this we'll move on to the next application that is the other way around that is whatever you speak it should write into text so for this we again the same thing we require three things and in this time we are not going to use the text to speech instead we are going to use a speech recognizer which will recognize your text or the speech sorry which will recognize the speech and then convert that speech into a text so we can use this into various applications so i'll tell you once we are done making the application so now let me delete the components which i don't require so that is i don't require a sound anymore i'll delete it i don't require a text to speech anymore i'll delete this also i don't want a text box also i just i have a label where i can display whatever is being said so i have button and a label now now what i require is i'll go to the media now and then i'll this time i'll choose speech recognizer I'll drag it and drop it here and again there's an invisible component which works behind the scene so it is there down on the non-visible component once done we are done with the designer part we'll go to the blocks now i already have when button one is click what i have to do is call up the speech recognizer so click on the speech recognizer and then call speech recognizer get text add it here so now what happens is whenever you click on a button it call up it calls up the speech recognizer to get a text now what should it do after getting a text so for that click on a speech recognizer and then go here down you have something at the very first that is when speech recognizer after getting text so when you are calling up the clicking the button it is getting a text so now what it should do after getting a text so what it should do is it should print on the label so i'll call up the label and then choose and randomly and then change add it here and then change font size not the fonts i need the text because i want a text from the speech recognizer now i'm not going to use the text from here because i don't want this text that is entered by me i want the text what the result i'm getting from the speech recognizer so for that you need to go to the again speech recognizer and then go down and then 
click on the result speech recognizer result i just add it up so with this we are done with this we're done with the pro uh, block part it's pretty simple what you have is just a button whenever you're clicking clicking on a button you're calling the speech recognizer and when you're clicking on a and what happens is like after getting the text from that you're setting the label one text to the result whatever you're getting from the speech recognizer so it's pretty simple what we are doing here now we'll check out whether it's up working or what so here is my screen and then if i tell hello so you can see the label i have here I got an hello here it may ask you for the permission to get give you an access to the media and the microphone when you're using it for the first time so please give the access to it without that it will not it will not work out so give an access to that so that you get this so once you click on a button if it even if it's pretty okay hello to this webinar okay it's taking a webinar hello So this is how you can use the speech to text and uh, this application can be used in the various uh, various uh, projects uh, and scenarios like consider you have a where you want to operate the something like you want to send a message or do any task by telling it you can always use this and the vice versa for the previous one that is text to speech I hope it's clear until here to everyone. Please let me know in the chat session with S if it is clear. I request all the participants to please let me know in the chat session if I'm all clear until here so that we can go ahead with the other topics. Take your time and please let me know in the chat session. Okay, thanks for responding. Please, uh, I'll go with the other things. So before going to other things, I want to explain you something which is like very much required and you may be asked about the same so what is the question like if I have to debug or if I have an error so how is that possible like how I'm going to know and how I'm going to debug it when you are doing a coding you always get that error into red color line or an orange color line that and here is the part where you get stuck so what if I have the same thing here or will I have the same thing here yes you will have the same thing here and usually the and you not usually like every time there is a problem in the coding part itself not in the ui part ui part whatever you are it's up to you and up to your requirement and the visual appearance what you need so we'll not surely get any uh problems in the ui here that is designer part so we'll have surely in the block part so what you need to do is like when you click on a block part consider like i don't have any errors now and my application is working perfectly fine consider now I just have this thing and then I duplicate this sorry not in the comment I duplicate this now you can see this red color cross sign on both the blocks which is very much clearly indication that this is an error with this you cannot do the thing you have two things that is it is being declared two times so you cannot have this so whenever you have any errors you will have this cross marks and that is where if your application doesn't work come back to the blocks and see if you have any wrong marks you should perfectly not have any wrong marks and if you have wrong marks please go through it so what is the problem is i'm calling the same thing two times so i cannot have that so if i delete this can delete this you can also click on a delete button and delete it and it's perfectly done or you can drag it to the dustbin here down now done with debugging part or where the error is the second thing is i'll show you how can you collapse that is something like when you click here collapse in the sense like 
as of now we are doing something very small like just we have few functions to do and few methods where i'm setting and getting the things setter and getter methods what if i have a long thing like where i'm getting the result of the text and then using the if conditions if loop if uh, other conditions we'll see that in a moment what if i have all those conditions and my block is so big and if i just want to navigate through all the blocks it takes long time consider like you have all the right side blocks are perfectly fine i am just have a problem with the left side blocks so i just want to collapse them how can do a collapse is you can either write double click on the block which you want to collapse so if you double click so this is how this is what if you get this broken sign this is not that it is broken it is like it has been collapsed so if you double click again that will expand you can also do this by right clicking here and then clicking on collapse block and that will get you collapsed and one more shortcut for this is for an example if you want this block that is this when space recognizer as of now you want this complete block to be used again somewhere so what you can do is you need not do it all the way again for that click on the right click here and then you can add it to backpack you can see here backpack so if you add it to backpack that complete block will be available just a second so the use of collapse is uh, consider like just a minute i'll just okay use of collapse is uh, what we do is in the when you're writing a function writing a methods into your normal programming so you have all the libraries being called up at the first and then those are being collapsed because you don't need to be like looking so lengthy just to make it like more clear and simple to know what is being required you need that thing and remaining thing you're collapsing it so that is where you need, need a collapse so now as i have added a bit earlier into the backpack so if this is my bag now here so if i click on the backpack I have that complete block here so whenever you require that complete block you can get it from the backpack so so this is how you can now save your time when creating the applications so with this i hope it is very much clear both the application that is speech to text and text to speech We'll move on ahead with our next project that is how can we use camera which is a very vital part of everything you do so now we'll see how can we use a camera that is get access to the camera when you're doing it in android studio you call up the engine then you call up the take a permission and all these things so here we don't have so much to do what you have to do is just uh, i'll make a new project click on my project so I start a new project and then write app three to this. Click on OK. Okay, let me change this boring theme that is classic. Device default is better. Okay. Now we know how can we add a button in a general manner. You can always even add a image to a button for that what you need to do is consider like i'll just show you as an additional information to this i'll just add a button here so i have a button here if i want to add up the image to this button just go to the button properties we have something called image here if you click on image and then uh, it says no so you can click on upload file and then choose the image whichever you want and that button will have an image that will give you more visual appearance to your application i'll also show you a few of my application which has been created using the same at the end of the webinar so this is just this was just an additional information so we'll 
come back to our required application that is uh, how to get an access to camera so let me change the alignments of the screen center and this is also to the center good now i'll require two things i'll click have this image from the user interface i'll choose image and drag it and drop it here so now i have it in the center i'll take one button here which i'll click which i'll be requiring whenever i click on the button camera will be open and then that image will be captured and be, will be displayed on the screen so with this said i got two things that is text for button and the image now let me give the size to this image that is height of consider with the person that is 75 okay and then width of 85 done and text for button i'll change it to capture So we'll see how it looks like so okay and now we have two things that is image and a button i'll require one more thing that is a camera so i can go to the media again and then select this time a camera and add it here now again this is into the non-visible component which because it should not be like it is a, not in the ui part so it will be in the invisible component so once done, we are done with the UI part. We'll go to the blocks. Uh, at Soumya, for surely, I'll show you that thing uh, at the end. Please remind me at the end. I'll show you the second application for sure. So once you are into the blocks, click on a button. When button one is clicked, what I want to do is camera call up the camera take picture i'll just zoom it out zoom in sorry and then once i zoom in so i'll click on the camera again when camera after picture is taken i'm setting up the image one image one change animation to image sorry that is picture image one picture two and now I want the image of the click picture that is camera picture so I can get that thing here from variable and then click on a get and then choose image so this will get me image whatever was here this is get image so you can also click here and then you can click here and then get image so my application is done let me go to my application to test it out i think so it is not been synced so i'll just close and reconnect it once again click on a reset connection and then a companion until i get this uh, application you can ask me the questions also in the chat session i don't know why it is taking longer than usual i set the connection then connect a companion
yeah so i got my screen here now so if i click on the capture now it opens the camera i'll just uh, click it and then press the right button and i have my image in my image that is picture my image is in this horizontal because i have tilted the my phone when i was taking it i'll do it once again capture so i have my image it is showing me wrong mark while choosing image block because uh, you need to have this as an image as you can see here on the screen uh, set image one picture to get image and you can get this block from here if you just click on this image you get image block okay just got collapsed i hope it is clear at nopur So we are done with uh, creating a simple camera application. Now we'll jump right into the other part of our uh, webinar that is sensors. Vivek Vishwakarma, every picture we'll save right now. No the pictures will not be saved because uh, we are not storing them or getting access to the file system of the mobile phone we are just uh, capturing the image storing that into the temporary application itself and then showing in the image view so that will not be saved into your mobile phone as of now and that is not covered into this webinar you can always reach us out and we'll help you with that I request all the participants please let me know if we are done until here so that we can go ahead with the census part. Yes, you can surely save the images from here, but you need to have other, like you need to have access to the storage and then you can do it. Surely we'll share the link in the telegram and uh, the next question is like, can you tell me at the end? Uh, yeah, you can reach us out in our mail and we'll surely help you out with it. Okay, we'll move on to the next, that is how can we access to the sensors? We have many various sensors and we all know how, why we do we need to have sensors to get the, like whenever there is a physical change into the environment, we want to sense it out and then do something. And this can be very much widely used into various applications. So let me create a new project, start a new project, app four, click on okay. So let me set up my screens fast first. So I'll just change the theme to, I really hate this classic theme. Please don't mind it. So I'm done changing the screen. I'll just add up uh, 
I'll tell you the goal first and then we'll start doing it. So the goal of the first project that is with the sensor is two things. We'll do two applications, like two methods we'll use. First thing is we'll use a light sensor and then we'll use one label. Whenever, what is the value of the light intensity will be displayed on the label. So this is our first thing. And second thing is we'll get introduced. How can we use the if else conditions? So what we'll do is we'll set up the condition. If the light intensity is more than so and so, we'll display some message. So this is how uh, our two things will be for this project. So having our goal, we'll get started. So we have a question, what is the advantage of using this technique for developing an application apart from having user friendly? So we have very various, various advantages like you can have so much of your time saved with this and you can have uh, like very easy access to it. You can also share the things as you can do with Android Studio also. You need not have so much of uh, codings and all these things. So until you have like very high requirement or you are into the top level of doing some application, you can almost do all your applications into this and which will save so much of your time and effort. You have many functions into this, not just with what is, whatever you can see here, what we are doing is like almost all are like just to basic to intermediate. We have very advanced, like you can also integrate Google ads. You can also integrate push notifications. You can have analytics. You can have database, Firebase, everything with this. So, but we are not covering all these things into, into this webinar, having the short time. But you can do almost so much of doing all these things. I hope it is clear. Okay. We'll get back to our application now. So, first thing I'll have it, it is label to display the intensity of a light. I'll add up the label and then, sorry, I'll make it to center. Okay. Now, I think so my text size of the label that is font size is too small so I'll just uh, click on the label one and then change the property of the font size to consider 35 and then I'll have this in a large font. I'll just clear this I don't want this text for label one okay I'm done clearing it. Before we go ahead you can also change the screen one name like this is annoying like you have screen one as a name for the screen so you can click on the screen and then go down and you have title of the screen that is screen one so let me change it to so now i have my name changed so you can always use this instead of using camera is it possible to have a scanner yeah sure you can always use the barcode scanner available in the media section that is uh, on the not sorry in the media in the census you have here barcode scanner you can go here in the census and you have barcode scanner you can always use that thing okay now I'm done with uh, changing my screen title also and now I have a label which is uh, empty so it's not it's showing me nothing now let me first add up the sensor that is the sensor for this is light sensor so I have my light sensor on the sensors it you can find this you can find that in the palette session click on the light sensor and then drag it and drop it so all the sensors are non visible components which will be in the back end so that's not there in the screen so light sensor has been added here you can see on the non visible component on the bottom of the screen and then I'm done here so let me go to the blocks here it's completely fresh. I don't have any blocks here. I'll click on a label. I'll click on a label, sorry, light sensor. And then you have when light sensor light is light changed. That is whenever there is a change in the intensity of a light or the luminosity of the light. I want to do something. So what you can do is click on, I drag and drop that method that is when light, light sensor light is changed. And you have this LUX that is intensity of a light. So I'm setting the set label. I'll just choose set label font size. I'm just setting it uh, because uh, it takes time to search. So I'll just change from here directly text. Now, once I'm changed text, I still have this wrong mark. Remember that because it is an incomplete. 
you're asking it to do something but you're not telling what to do like you're not giving it the food when you're telling that i'll be doing this so set label text to what you're not giving so you're having this wrong mark so now go to the light sensor and then if you go down you have a light sensor lux that is intensity of light so just add it here and that mark should go yes it's gone so now what happens is whenever there is a change in the light intensity the label text of the text one changes to lux that is light intensity what is being there so let me screen stream it fantastic i think so yeah you can see i'm getting the values so it's 20 12 and if i just keep my hand above it it's zero and if i leave it it's 12 13 so this is the intensity value i'm getting from the light sensor i don't have other phone to put the flash on it so that i get a huge value okay so as we are getting the values of the light intensity in, we'll go back and add up the if else condition to this so here uh what we'll do is we'll add up one more label here on the user interface click on a label and add up one more label down so you have added one more label and i'll change this label text to completely empty you can also one more thing to remember before we go ahead you can see something like whenever you go here and choose any component like consider like label one was there label two was there light sensor was there and all these things so i'll consider like i go to the label one you have something called here visible and non visible and it is being ticked that is checked so there's nothing but like if it is checked uh only the visible components and the proper in the property of that it is checked that will be visible on the main screen and if you uncheck it that will be not visible so consider like if i just label one which had the value to be showed was light intensity if i unclick it so you can see my application that is gone i don't know why it isn't coming okay it has been turned off just a minute i'll start the screen stream for again So you can see here that label is gone because I have clicked if it's un okay, unchecked it. I'm not altering the brightness. What I'm doing is just placing the finger over the light sensor and removing it. And if I'm facing it towards the light, the value is increasing. So if I now visible, click on visible, I get my label that is label one that had the value to be showed. So if I'm just focusing it directly to the light, the value is increasing. So the, by using this visible thing, you can always uh, choose that having the component visible or not visible. So in this application itself, what I'll do is to make you understand very much clear and also to get access to the Boolean thing, I'll add up a button here. So whenever the button is pressed, only then, whenever the button is pressed, only then uh, you can see the light intensity. So what I'll do is now, I'll select the label one and then uncheck it, make it invisible so you can see here that label one is not visible only label two is visible and the button is visible i'll change the property of a button to press to show press to show so we are done so okay now let me go to the blocks whenever button one is clicked whenever button one is clicked i'll just duplicate this okay i'll drag it and drop it here and then change it here when you click on the text you have something called visible so visible and visible is not complete anyway related to light sensor 
so it just kicked it out it came outside so i'll just delete this and then set visible to now visible thing is s or no so that is a boolean value either it will be s or no so for that we will get that thing in the logic if you go to the logic you have true or false so i'll make it to true so now it will always be showing the light sensor to the label one like la label one will always have the value of the light intensity but it will not be visible only when you click a button that will be visible now we'll see how it works so this is my application now you can see i don't have a label too so if i click on a press to show i'll have my label please repeat light sensor project okay i'll just brief it out very soon we needed three things that is uh, we needed one label that will be showing as the light intensity value and we needed one light, light sensor so sensor can be found here on the down under the palette side sensor and then you choose the light sensor from here and then it is a non visible component so it is here once done i go to the blocks click on the light sensor and then whenever the light sensor that is intensity is changed I drag that block here. I'm setting the label one text to the light intensity. That is light sensor intensity. LUX is nothing but a light intensity. That is. So I hope it is clear. So now moving ahead, what we'll do is, if the light intensity is, if the light intensity value is more than so and so, we'll display the text in the label two as awesome i'll just make it empty for now so whenever the, i press a button it will show me the light intensity value also and also okay the label two if the condition meets to, to do that i think so it's a bit confusing so i'll just make this label two as a visible so that you can see that it works only when it works only when Okay, wait. We'll just go the normal way. Okay. Whenever you press the button, it shows the light intensity value. And when the light intensity value crosses so and so limit or threshold, label two will be shown. So for that, we have the components ready. I'll go to the blocks. Now, in the blocks, what I'll do is set label text. Sorry. Before that, I'll go to the control. In control, we have if then. So I'll take that if then and add it here. Now, if the condition is if the light intensity is greater than something, then uh, label two should be set to some value. Label two, I'll just copy it from. Okay, I'll click on a label. Sorry, click on a label two, and then I'll choose anything from here and then change the change the sorry text text to text as hi high intensity now we'll compare here so to compare you can go to the math Or also into the logic we'll go with the logic i think so we don't have a greater sign here we'll go with the math and then choose this and then chain this to greater than greater than so what should be like what is the condition to be given light intensity greater than so for that what i'll need is this light intensity so i'll go, go to the light in light sensor and then take up this light intensity value so light intensity value greater than consider like i think so it's pretty fine if we consider 10 okay we'll go with the 10 so go to math and then take up this empty value and then place it here and then change this value to 10 so now what happens is whenever the light intensity is more than 10 label 2 will be set to high intensity So let us check out the application now.
okay we'll also add up the else so that uh, we get to know that something is happening else else set label text to i'll duplicate this and change this to low intensity Okay, let us go to the screen okay here here I am so now uh, if I have the press the okay if the value is more than 10 and if I press the button it shows high intensity if the value is low and then if I press the button it says low intensity so now we are requiring whenever like because uh, we have given the condition is like only when you press a button so what if i just want like to make it uh, whenever there is a change in the value so what i'll do is just it's pretty straightforward i'll just uh, take this and put it here in this block i'll not require this button itself so now it's pretty simple like whenever there is a change in the light value and if the light intensity is more than 10 it sets the light label to as high intensity else it will show the text as a low intensity and label one text will al always be the value of the light intensity and label one is set to visible because I have made it uh, okay, not visible in the proper designer screen so now if we go to the if we go to the screen stream now you can see like without pressing the button itself see it says high intensity if I just make it low it says low intensity high intensity and low intensity Nupur uh, okay no worries we'll just uh, help you out getting it clarified I'll sh show you this I'll uh, repeat it once again follow up with me we use three things that is one is light sensor component that we get from the sensor palette here you can use light sensor from here and the other one is we use two labels one label is to show the value of the light how much intensity of the light is available i'll just remove this button also to make it clear okay so we use one label to show the intensity of a light and other label to show whether it is high intensity or low intensity that's all so for the first thing that is label one to show the for the label one so i have been here to light sensor and then whenever there is a change in the light i called up the method that is whenever there is a change in the light do method so what i'm doing is setting the label one text to the light sensor and this is you can get this from here that is setting the text that is setter method from light sensor if you go down you have light sensor lux this will give you the intensity of the light so i'm setting the label one text to the intensity of a light as a goal and label one is set to true because in the designer screen what we have done is so if you see the click on the label one properties and if you go down you can see here we had made it invisible and this is the reason i have i'm adding here visible to true and for the label two what is the condition we have is if the light sensor value is more than 10 then it is going to display me the high intensity on the label two else it is going to display me low intensity so these are program and it's that's all so if we can go to the screen stream and then you can see like high intensity if 36 and if i just make it to low that is less than 10 low intensity i hope it is clear now please let me know in the chat session if it is clear and if you have done until here please let me know so that we can go ahead with the other sensor that is orientation sensor it's like a visual basic yeah pretty much like it okay so we'll go ahead with the 
next thing you can use this light sensor like consider you are making a project and where you have the requirement of ldr or any light temp light sensor so you need not have physical uh, devices to purchase you can create an application and then uh, have these values being read from the mobile sensor itself use the sensor that is bluetooth connectivity or wi-fi connectivity Wi-Fi connectivity and then uh, you can give the command to your Arduino board or Raspberry Pi whatever the development board or whatever the project you're going to use you can have the things change so that will save so much of your money buying the physical components all you can do is just make your own application give all the details whatever you want and then you can use the sensors available in the mobile phone to get used and make your application useful for having the physical things done when it is developed as an application it may take more memory space uh, by the end of the webinar we'll make one application that is convert that into apk and see whether it is taking more space or not it usually doesn't take more space it takes the normal space whatever is being taken as a default okay so we'll mo move on with uh, orientation sensor so you might have heard of gyroscope accelerometer and all these things that is whenever you, the moment you tilt your phone the screen itself gets tilted so how does it happen that is because of gyroscope and accelerometer sensor so what we'll, we are going to use the same thing here so what we're going to do is whenever i change my phone to like tilt it to the right side uh, the label should show me right side tilted and if i'm tilting it to the left side it should show me that is tilted to the left so having this as a goal we'll get started so let me create a new project again start a new project app 5 at minmoy mukherji how to link screen 1 to screen 2 uh, surely i'll cover that uh, i'll repeat it once again before i end up the same webinar and you please you also remind me before we end up so that i can show you that thing until then you can follow up with me here I'll just uh, change this theme to device default, change the horizontal to center. So once done i'm done with so the requirement is i need just one label and orientation sensor so if i'm tilting to the right the label will show light right tilted and if to the left it will show me left tilted so having this as a simple goal we'll get started click on a label place it on the label here and i'll just clear the label here to completely empty and change the size to 36 for this instance and then I require a sensor so I'll go to the sensor here and then orientation orientation sensor orientation sensor drag it and drop it here so, and this, that will get in the non-visible component so we are pretty much done with having the components placed on our application we'll move on to the blocks and then click on this orientation sensor and then when orientation is changed drag that block when orientation is changed that is the value is being changed i'll click on a label set label set label text to the value of the orientation so i'll just take this up many other values like many parameters that is azimuth and uh, magnitude pitch and all these things i'll take as a, i'll take the role for now so i'll take i have taken the role so whatever uh, the value will be there in the role that will be displayed on the label one so if i go to the screen so you can see my now my phone is at the table so and if i just tilt it towards my left it gives me positive values and if i'm tilting it to my right it gives me negative values and if it is in my desk it is zero
So now I'm using my phone sensor that is a orientation sensor to get the values. And now you can relate this like you can pretty much use this into many various applications that where you have to have the balance of the project or have to balance of the car or what is being tilted. Like you can relate to many applications even if you can say like having the uh, wheelchair for the old. So we can always get to know like just if you just have the phone on the wheelchair you can get to know like whether what is the orientation what is the level of the orientation steep of the orientation how it is going and based on that you can always set the conditions to do something or like you can what you can do is re relate this thing call up the text speech whenever it is tilted more to the left that call to text speech will speech text out and then tell like please keep your balance to the level or lean towards your right if it is tilted on the right left side and vice versa so you can always relate these things to various applications now my label is just showing me the values for now it should show me left tilted and right tilted for that again i'll go back and click on the control use the if then logics if okay now if i need to compare the values so consider i'll go to that i'll go to the math and then select this come select this and here i click greater than or less than consider and i'll just take the orientation sensor and then take any of it place it here sorry available is not in the condition to be tested so if i change this to role i can this will get connected okay role now as the values are into the integer so i cannot take the text and then put the value inside it so integer and then add up like whatever what is the value i'm getting here so consider like for this is for the right so if i'm tilting it to the right okay it's not uh, because i have removed the block so it's i have removed the block from here so it's not giving me the values there i'll just add up this block here so that i get to know it yeah no okay, i'm getting it so if i'm tilting it to the right side i'm getting consider we'll keep the fair enough as 30 value so i'll will keep it as uh minus 40 sorry minus 10 and then set label text to i'll paste it here and then label text i'll remove this and then go to the text I'll go to the text and then add up the text here as I'll add up the text here as right tilted. So our other condition is a uh, I have one more condition so i'll use else if and then drag it here so i'll get one more condition i'll just copy it from here duplicate it Just a minute, I'm just checking out. Okay, so yeah, here I'm changing this to greater than because uh, for the previous it was more than, for this I'm changing to greater than, and again duplicating this itself and then i'll change the text as 
left tilted so now I'll just open my application so now it is on the desk and if I'm just tilting it okay I'll just add up one more label so that I can show you the value also just going to the user interface and then adding a label here going here and then changing the label to text please connect here okay label to text to roll orientation sensor and changing this to roll okay values are not being changed okay 10 here so now if I go to the screen and now I can see the value if I just change left tilted and if I'm doing to the this it's right tilted so I think it's very much clear it's working perfectly fine I hope everyone got until here please let me know in the chat session I request all the participants please respond to me on the chat session so that it's interactive. Just a minute, there's an issue with this. So here is the link for the feedback please uh, provide us the feedback whatever you feel we'll be very happy to hear from you and here is the telegram link you can connect with us in the telegram also and do not forget to subscribe to the channel and support us so that we can get you the content which is useful for you you can reach us out with your requirements on this mail id can we develop quiz using this platform it's pretty much easy and you can do it very nicely in this platform the time doesn't permit us for today but you have the option to share all the things into the feedback form please do share it on the feedback form is the session over we still have uh, five minutes left and we respect your time so we'll not extend it to the longer do not forget to subscribe and share to the channel so that we get support from all of you okay
please do not uh, be with us for next five minutes we'll also have an announcement for the for you all please share the feedback form in the main sir yeah sure we'll share the feedback form in the mail and also into all the groups we have one thing left for the agenda what we had for today that is making a web browser okay i'll just uh, kindly explain the link screen one two screen two i'll just do that for you please i can watch me here i'll just create a my project and then click on a new project here give us a screen change sorry i cannot have the it's very much easy how we can do this i'll not change the theme for this time let let it be the classic one okay i'll just add up a button here and then some randomly label here i'll not rename those you can click on the add screen on the, on the top here add screen and then give a screen name of your desired i'll not change by default the screen to i'll just click on okay so this is my screen one as you can see on the title of the screen that is screen one i'll not change it and if you want to switch from the screen one to screen two you can always click on the screen one and screen two or any number of screen you create and then you can switch always so now i'm in my screen two as you can see on the title here screen two and also on the component list you have something called screen two here and you can always change the properties of the screen two from here now let me add up just a button here just to show that it is a screen two i'll rename it to screen two screen two okay screen two now what you do is so my goal is uh, whenever i press this button that is on the screen one if i press this button it should take me to the screen two for that you need to go is to the go to the block click on a button when button one is clicked click on a control go down and you have something called open another screen with a screen name we have open another screen with screen name click and drag it here and then go to the text choose the empty text and mention the screen name that is screen 2 screen 2 so i'm done make sure that the name what you have given on the screen 2 is exactly name what you give here if you mismatch it it will give you an error now let me go to the screen uh, this thing and i'll show you so now you can see this is my screen one and if i click on text for button one this will take into the screen two so yes you can see the screen two i hope it solved the query of how to link screen one to screen two google form is not opening and just let me check out where's just a minute screen three Uh, please do check out google form is uh, opening so please uh, reload it so that you can i'll share it once again to you all so this is the link for the google form feedback please do give us your feedback So we are top of the hour that is two hours it's 9 30 now and we have pending with one that is web browser i i respect your time so let me know like if we can continue further with the session or we'll end up for this for today i request all the participants please let me know
it's 931 and we are left with one thing to be completed that is web browser so if you want me to continue and teach you the web browser please let me know else we'll uh, end up the session in a moment Okay, before we continue, I just, uh, we have uh, more responses with the continue. I'm grateful that you are liking the session. Okay, we also have that please end for today. And we also have continue a much. I'll do is like, I'll uh, just, just give me five minutes of time and I will finish this. Okay, before we finish the last topic, I want to also uh, thanks all of you for being here and making this session a successful. We'll just check out our Just a minute. Okay. Just give me a minute. I'll respond to all our fair queries. I just have one issue here. I'll just fix it out. So I just wanted to be grateful to my team Hummingbird for being supportive and all of you also for joining this webinar. Okay, without taking much of your time, we'll go back to the MIT App Inventor. Okay, now we'll create a my project that is a start a new project. give it a name browser okay how can we make the app secure from being hacked and pirated how can we connect with you via whatsapp group i have no telegram uh yeah sure you can kindly mail me on the given uh mail address that is info.hummingbirdstech and we'll let you know how can we you connect us with whatsapp so i have my screen one i'll just change this to theme to device default and horizontals to center and this okay so for this, what you need is uh, in the user interface, you have something called web viewer. Drag and drop that web viewer here on the screen. And now height to let me make it to consider like 75. Okay, and then width to consider 87. And then it asks me for home URL. So I'll give h https colon double forward slashes www dot google dot co dot in 
okay so with this we are done now this web view will give you the access to this as you can see here if I just click on the screen stream that is uh, my screen to get my Google so if I just search something here let me search something okay so you get the complete thing whatever you want now the question is how can you make this more interesting or that is like how can we get it forward and backward like we have in the browser so for that will let us add up the go to the layout now I just missed this layout so here you have something called horizontal arrangements vertical arrangement so you can add up this layout so that you have the components in the more systematic way so let me now just add up the horizontal arrangement so that I can place two comp buttons inside it so now I will go to the user interface one button here and one more button next to it so I have two buttons here now I'll go to the properties of the horizontal arrangement here and then height to automatic let it be and then change this width to percent 87 okay so now you can see uh, I have made this I'll click on the text button to and then change the width to fill parent and button one also to fill parent so with this we are done now what we want to do is like we want to have two things that is navigation forward and backward and this is my how my application looks like I think so it's again disconnected let me connect my stream So this is how the UI looks like now. So go to the MIT App Inventor, go to the blocks now. And then once you go to the block, click on the web viewer, sorry, first button one. And then when button one is clicked, then click on the web viewer. And then you have something, all the methods, what you can do is call methods. You can see go back go forward so first i'll just for this i'll call up the go back i'll duplicate this complete thing duplicate and then i got the wrong symbols i'll change this to button two and that should go and then i'll delete this because i want this button to go forward so for now I'll click here go back again here and then take a go forward and now this but one button will take me forward and one button will take me backward so let me rename those buttons also I will go to the designer window click on the button one that is button one is for the backward so back and the other button one is for the forward forward So now I have two buttons that is one for the back and one for the book this one so this is my screen let me just search something okay and now if I go I, I go I get this I'll just go to this website if I want to go back now if I click on the back it'll take me back if you click on the forward it'll take me to the forward so with this method you can also add up uh, many more that you have on the blocks if you go to the block you have many methods you can create a pretty very good browser using this with your own name so if you go to the web view or you have many methods that is you can have one to reload you can have one to like have a, as we guess call like uh, we'll have icons like if you press that it'll take to the YouTube if you press that it'll take to the UR okay? Google what server it is you have go home go forward go backward you have also get the location you also have page loaded and so on So this is how you can create a simple web browser you can add up much more functionality so it's see you can see like it's look pretty clear 
awesome like you can access the web so well you can click on the back you can have these buttons down you can instead of writing the back you can use the arrows and you can do the same so with this we finish up uh, all the session all the things what we had done or what we had planned for do to do for today So that's it for the webinar for today we are almost like 12 minutes extra than planned i thank you everyone here for attending the webinar and please do not forward to provide us the feedback given shared on the link you can also reach us on the telegram and uh, comment on the youtube video also and the video will be made available within two hours you can find the video completely recorded on my channel itself so you can always find our video there kindly say share share and subscribe to our channel and i extend my gratitude to all the participants and to my team hummingbird especially for uh, supporting us to get this session done thank you all thank you for awesome evening So, so just some e-resources to learn more about it you can always go to the mit app inventor and then choose the e-documentation and then you can have all the uh, required things in detail and if you have needs more clarification you can always reach us out uh, reach us reach us out on to the given mail if you have any doubts please uh, let me know in the chat session now so that i can clear it out for you you can also know me uh, let me know the other topics which you're interested so that we can have the session on the other topics also Uh, online classroom quizzes and games yeah, that's interesting gaming animations uh, i'm literally very bad at gaming so i'm not the right person to get started with gaming sir is any certification of this webinar uh, our team has not planned any certifications for this webinar as it was just for two hours surely like if we have uh, any other seminars or webinars for uh, 
uh, longer days that is two three days or four days with the in-depth surely will provide you with the certifications you can also reach us for uh, how can you relate all these topics and how can you get going with this for further with our links given on the chat session that is email and telegram and so on Okay, we let up the session. Thank you. Uh, take care. Stay safe.